Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this new day, and we thank you for your guidance and your strength in our lives. And Father God, it's hard to believe that we're halfway through our first class, and I'm just so happy for your guidance and your provision. And Father God, no doubt during the middle of a class that the students are tired, we're, we're tired, we're exhausted. Father, we ask that your spirit would fill us tonight, give us rest, maybe rest in you, maybe trust in you. Father, I just pray for the students here. No doubt there's personal problems or there's a personal need. Maybe there's a need in the church. Father, you know those needs, and I just ask that you would answer them in accordance with your will. Father, we pray that this time would be a great time of, of learning and study. May you give us eyes to see and ears to hear. May you transform us through the word, and may we live holy and pure lives. And, and Father, as we study the spiritual disciplines tonight, may we endeavor all of us, including myself, to really exercise spiritual discipline, spiritual exercise, so that we can be, uh, we can have endurance and patience to do your will and to live holy and pure lives. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. Okay, so we are on to halfway through the semester. Can you believe it? Halfway through the, the class. I, I just can't believe it. We're, we're, over halfway. This is our seventh session and six, six classes in. And I'm just, I was looking at preparing the, the grading sheet. And I just, I can't believe it. It's just such an answer to prayer. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy. Let's just go through a brief introduction here. Actually, before we, before we go into our, our, our lecture, I did want to just share with you our for those of you who are not so familiar, maybe some of you are using our YouTube channel. And I did just want to talk through some things just so that everyone can really understand. Uh, here, here's the page to our YouTube channel. So you can just go to YouTube and then type in interpreting the word. Later, I'm going to have in partnership with EBST. I haven't had the chance to, to switch the, to do the, the graphic design to change the, the picture. But then if, when you come to our main page, if you notice here, we have home, we have videos, we have playlists, channels, and discussion, okay? So the, the, two, the two tabs that you wanna be looking at are videos and playlists, okay? So if I go to the playlist, I click on playlist, what comes up for you, right now we have six different playlists. And the benefit for you is that if you miss a video, you want to go watch a video or, or you're interested in, in another, we're doing a, a class in Colossians. So if you had free time and you wanted to, to listen to a class in Colossians, or if you were, if you were teaching, if you were teaching through Colossians, uh, you, you can take full advantage of all the different lectures that we, that we've, that we've posted here. So I'll just go and, I'll just go here and show you one example. So we'll go to Christianity 101. So when I click on this, uh, the first chapter will start, and then you have, you have all of the, the classes on the right, okay? Now, this is the really cool thing. So let's go to, I'm going to click down to chapter 5, okay, chapter 5. So this was just from last week. Now, what... I added a new, this is really cool. This is very cool, okay? If you look down here, we just have a brief, if everyone can see that, we have a brief description of what the video is about. But then it says here to see below the outline and highlights. So when I click down here, show more, everyone sees this show more. What I have here for us is the outline, <laughs> the outline of the video, okay? And then we also have some highlights. So we have an outline, but Manga Kapitid, this is so beautiful. This is the beauty of YouTube. So let's say you've already listened, but you just want, you wanted to study, listen again, the section that we did, John 3, 1 to 7. Instead of going here and trying to find and look, where is it at? If you just come down here and you click on the blue. So I'm going to click on, he gives life, John 3, 1 to 7. I click. It automatically goes to the spot in the video. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you don't have to be looking. So my, my prayer and desire is when I, at, when I answer, a, if there's a specific question, even down here, when does the Holy Spirit dwell in us? Boom. It goes right 
to that section. So Talaga, if, if you missed part or you didn't understand something in the lecture, just go to here and and I'll have the uh, the timeline. Okay, now this is really the first, I think I did it for two videos. So that really early video is not yet. I have to go back and, and add it. So I don't have the time right now. So, but moving forward, moving forward, when I have time, I will go back and then the new videos will do that. The other thing I wanted to say about the competition is that Telega, if there is a question, if there is a question you have, I really want you to post it. Let's go to, to our Facebook page. I don't want you to be ashamed. I don't want you to be scared. If you have a question, uh, let's say, for example, you have a question on chapter six, or just, uh, or if you want to create a new question, I really want to encourage you, the, 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 the posts, the threads, I want you to, to post your question, to post your observation. And my desire is maybe I'll answer it, but I want us all to be coming together as a community to discuss and interact. So maybe I won't answer it and I'll wait to see someone else because really the desire here for EVST is that beyond, once you finish the certificate, once you finish the program, we are a community, okay? We are a community. And when you have a, a ministerial question, when you have different things, uh, I want you to post it here. So, for example, Pastor Henry is working on a presentation for child abuse. Very important. Uh, if he wanted, he could post any content or anything that he had. He could post a comment. He could post a question. He could post his presentation. And, and we can interact with it. We can discuss it. Um, or it can be used as uh, in your ministry, your context. Okay, so I really want now. Now the only the only limitation I have is it should be ministry related. Okay, it should be ministry related. You know, some people might post uh, COVID, <laughs> or they might post something else. So I really want it to be ministry related question. It doesn't have to be with with reference to. to uh, Christianity 101 okay it can be any type of ministry but I, I want us to start interacting this should be a group where we can discuss later we'll have different this will be this will become the main pay the main group and then we'll have sm smaller groups when we have several classes running so soon Henry will be teaching others will be teaching after me we'll have different groups and then as a as a close group you can discuss as well so I just want you to be thinking about this, and I really want you to encourage. Don't be afraid. Don't don't be shy. Okay, uh, this is for this is for the benefit of all of you. Okay, so I I did just want to share that briefly, and um, especially for the YouTube. So I, I hope that that can be a blessing to you. Let's go back. Let's let's begin the lecture now. Or any questions first? Any questions? Does anyone have a question, or it makes sense? Cool. Okay, so let's go back to our. Our lecture now, so we are, uh, we are Eastern Messiah School of Theology. Lord willing, maybe by Sunday we'll have a, face, a Facebook page, and uh, we're slowly getting set up here, so, so we're really becoming excited. And uh, we are partnering with Lord's Harvest. I have the logo. I got the logo from Liesel, so this is it's nice. I like it. I, I like the, the partnerships here. Very nice. So uh, we're working together. We're partnering together. At the end of the day, for the exaltation of the name of Jesus. That's, that's what we're doing this for. We're, we're here to bring glory and honor to the Trinitarian God. And so um, we're so thankful to be partnering together. Uh, Christianity 101, Chapter 6. Now, please forgive me. I did not ask to do this. Maybe Cyrilla will be angry. I don't know. But I, I, I understand that Chapter 6 has a different title. Fair enough. But I just... The content, I, I really like the content. I thought, I thought I, I read through the chapter today, and for the most part, I really liked what it was emphasizing. I thought it was spot on. And what they really discussed in chapter six, if, if you haven't studied yet, was the spiritual disciplines. So I think the title is uh, our partnership, you and me, or in partner, uh, God and me, I think. Something like that, something, some title like that. My part, his part, his part, my part, something like that was the title. 
and and that's a good title. I just I wanted to emphasize the spiritual discipline. So I I'm a very I'm a simple I'm a <laughs> simple man, and so uh, this is just my my title here because I do want us to be thinking about chapter chapter one was the gospel salvation chapter two assurance chapter three four and five is the trinitarian god uh who is god the father the son the holy spirit and now we're on to the spiritual discipline so uh, i i chose this title and and it's chapter six and the content is really the spiritual disciplines but i, I did like the, the the title just really quick to, to go through here the learning approach we are doing head heart hands and so we we're learning transforming and then applying and so this is a three-step approach and just uh again reviewing uh, lecture homework group meetings and then the mentor mentee relationships and there's one person right now that's considering the bachelor the bachelor program if there is someone else that wants to do bachelor. I think Henry is what was thinking as well. So there's two. Uh, if there's someone else, please let me know, send me a message because we need to be doing one quiz per week. And then there will be one exam at the end of the semester. Now what I will do is I will prepare a single page a, for the quizzes, a single page summary of the content and you will only be required. You will only be quizzed on that content. So it's going to be basic questions. It won't be trick questions. And uh, maybe five, probably five or 10, probably 10 questions on the quiz. And so each week you just need to prepare. And then there'll be a final exam. But the final exam will be, again, from those, those single page summary uh, uh, summaries. So each chapter will have a summary. Uh, what I'll do is I'll prepare a brief summary for chapters one to five, but there's no quizzes. So the quizzes will just start in chapter uh, chapter six. So next next week will be chapter six. And the quiz will be administered during your small group. So I'll, I'll send in, in advance the, the quiz and the, 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 I'll post the summary, I'll post the summary sheet on the group page. And then just the group leader who isn't, who isn't enrolled would just administer. So you can have someone who's leading uh, that's not that's not doing the quiz can just administer it and it's it's honesty it's honest you know I trust that it would just be a standard just like high school you just are given the quiz fill it out and then you can just grade the quiz you can just grade the quiz there and then just send me the results actually I'll add a spot I'll add a spot to, to, to give me the results what when you're sending in your weekly report okay any questions or comments okay. in yeah <laughs> Qualification to take qualification of the student to take bachelor's degree. Qualification or the requirement of the student. Yeah. The, the, go ahead. Uh, how can uh, let's say what is the requirement or what is the prerequisite or the qualification of the student in yeah. order he will be qualified to take the bachelor's degree? Yeah. So the minimum I believe would be a high school a high school diploma. I believe I need to double check in the U S they have a GED. So even if you don't graduate, you can take an exam. Do they have that here in the Philippines where you can do the GED? It's a, it's a, an entrance exam or, or you have to have a high school diploma. Uh, our, it's a, uh, your U S what uh, we have here, what's national entrance examination and CE. Okay. Uh, those students who from elementary that were able to, pass the NCEE, National College in Trans Examination, okay. they are qualified for high school. Yeah, let me, let me double check. Let me double check with Ricky Ricotto to make sure. But, I'm, but if you have a high school diploma, I believe that's the requirement. And then I'll, I'll find out if they also need the, the exam as well. I'll find out that require. I don't think, do, do they have to take the exam? If you're going, if you're enrolling at, let's say, Leyte Normal, do you have to take an entrance exam to, to, to be enrolled? Yes, uh, they have. Okay. So we need to find out. We, I, I need to find out, uh, and then we need to figure out how, um, but here's the thing. So, so that might be a process. We need to figure that out, but, but, the key right now is if you want to if you want to go down that path 
it's important for us to do it now for this class, if that makes sense. Meaning to say, we just, you just do the assignments now and then we can, we can uh, bring it, grandfather it in later. If, if, if we don't, then, then sign on. We can't, you'd have to go back and take, take the course again. So it is important that if you want to have this or to be considered for credit, and here's the thing, maybe, you, maybe you're unsure. And, and if you're unsure, you can still, do, if you wanted, you can still do the quizzes and the tests and you don't have to do it. But, um, but if, if you were thinking that down that route, you would need to do that. Um, I do want to emphasize the, the, the quizzes and the exam will not be Hindi Mahira, okay, Sigurado. It's just, it's, it's, it is to test your knowledge. It is to, you know, there's, there's that level of understanding, but it's not going to be hard. I, it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be hard. I, I, I assure you it won't be hard. Let's figure it out. But, but, um, at how, many the, years, how, many how many years to finish bachelor's of science in, what is it? Bachelor of science in? It, I think, I need to double check, but I think it's a Bachelor of Arts in Theology. I could be wrong. I think it's Bachelor of Arts in Theology, yeah. So typically when I prepared the curriculum in Naga, it's four years. It's four years. Um, but so here's the thing. If you, you have gen eds, so you might, if, if you're going to do the BAT, you might still have to take gen eds. We have to figure that out. But if you already have a bachelor's, in, if you have a bachelor's from another university or another college, then this would be the second bachelor's. All your gen eds, they just transfer over and then you're just taking the special courses. So you don't have to do all that extra work. So we have to figure, we have to, to prepare everything and it's gonna be a process. So, you know, nothing is cigarado until it's happening, but if you, if you were thinking about that, again, it's just easier to do the work now and then we can, we can figure it out later. And of course you don't have to, you can, just, you can just do it for the certificate, the PCEC, and there's no need for the quizzes and exams. It's uh, all of us, uh, we have agreed that all of us will take the bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a group study, so we just, it's a group study. Anyway, we will be working together. So yeah, okay, Siggy. We have this other. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, and that's fine. That's, that, that's fine. So what we'll do is right now, I just want to, again, until we figure everything out, it's not Hindi 100% Sagrado. So maybe there's a loophole, maybe there's an issue, but at least, um, at least if we plan it now, it won't be Sayang later on. And, and whatever you're learning, even if you take the quizzes or the exam, it, it has eternal consequence. So it's, it's fine. But I just, I just want to make that caveat because until we still have to have the uh, MOA sign and then we have to prepare all the different things. So there is a process. I don't want to give the 100% guarantee, but Ricky had verbally agreed that it's possible. So um, we just need to be working and just trusting and praying God. So Tomorrow I will have the summary prepared for you, and then in the small group, just administer the, just administer the, the quiz, okay? And then you can just exchange with each other, and then someone can just read the answers. I'll also, I'll send the answer key, but uh, who will, is Mayang gonna do it for credit, or just, will she audit? I think she's auditing, right? Mayang is auditing. Audit, uh, audit, uh. Yeah, so she, Mayang can administer it for you. I'll send her the answer key. Okay, great. So let's, let's go into our study. So we're, we did some uh, housekeeping and uh, I'm excited. So we have some bachelor, some bachelor students. So uh, let, let's really be, I'll be praying for you all. <laughs> okay, let's, let's go on those, here. Also those which are the, from the Korean Methodist Church, yeah. they will also, some of their leaders will take the bachelors. Okay, okay, Siggy. So it's really important for us to get this locked down as far as the details. Yes, and also from uh, Pastor Roldan Canietes, uh, Grace ano, in City Bible Fellowship. Okay, Siggy, Siggy, Siggy. So uh, their leaders also will take the bachelor's degree. Siggy, Siggy, okay, good. All right, great. So we need, to, we need to get the details, we need to get the details ironed out. So amen, praise the Lord, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Great, okay, so let's, 
let's continue on here now. Let's continue on now that we were done with the housekeeping. Um, also, mentor-mentee uh, report. So by August 1st, I want to have the report for those who are taking for credit. I, I just want, I want the report. So um, I'm going to continue to remind you all for that. Okay, let's move on here now. Uh, overview of the lecture. So to, tonight we'll be studying the spiritual disciplines, and I just want to give a brief overview of the object, of, for the objectives. We have two objectives. Number one, become familiar with the biblical foundation for the spiritual disciplines. We are not going to be going in, in depth into the spiritual disciplines. Some of the spiritual disciplines will be unpacked in chapter 6. Also, uh, there's, uh, I, there's a class on some of the spiritual disciplines, so we're not going, we're not going in depth. I'm giving you the biblical foundation for the, the command to practice the spiritual disciplines. And then I'm just going to give you a list with some passages of scripture for all the different major spiritual disciplines. There's debate and there's different views. And so I have 12, I have 12 uh, spiritual disciplines. And so we'll just talk through that. And so that's the second point that the, the second major objective is to become familiar with the different spiritual disciplines. So we do not have time to go to all the different passages. We'll focus on one primary text, and then I'll give you an, an overview of the other spiritual disciplines. And I would encourage you in your private time to look up the, the passage of scripture that, that deals with each of the disciplines. And in, in many cases, we're already practicing them. Uh, and so it's not something new. It's something that we should all be doing as Christians, especially since most, if not all here, are uh, mature Christians. So I don't want to, I don't want to um, minimize what you're probably already doing. So it could be just a review for you. And, and perhaps maybe in some instances, it's something that you had not yet considered. Um, so moving along here, outline for tonight, what we will be doing is we will read 1 Timothy 4, 6 to 10. So this is the primary text for the spiritual disciplines, 1 Timothy 4, 6 to 10. And then we're going to analyze the passage. We're going to highlight the different spiritual disciplines. And then we're also going to review and give the new assignment. So this is, this is the overview. We're going to read the passage. We're going to analyze the passage. And then we're just going to highlight. We're just going to briefly touch on the different spiritual disciplines, okay? So let's turn our Bibles to 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 10. The word of the Lord says, if you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine which you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent and silly myths. Rather, <laughs> train yourself for godliness. For while training is of some value, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. Having promise of life now and to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end, we toil and strive because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the savior of all people, namely those who believe. No doubt you probably noticed a slight change in some of the translations. I've tried to really follow, um, I've tried to follow the Greek. So uh, all the translations are gonna be slightly different. We'll talk through if you have a question on that. I do think that this is a, is a good translation that really captures the meaning in the sense. Let's go back to verse number six and let's just work through here and really, really draw out some significances. Okay, I really want to draw out some significances for us tonight. Let me ask a question. For those here, is this common? Have you heard of the term spiritual disciplines before or not so much in churches? Let's just talk for this on, on a minute. Have you heard of the spiritual disciplines? For, for church discipline, we heard. Okay, so, so 
spiritual discipline is there another word for spiritual discipline i don't know i i I've always been, I've, in the U.S., we always refer to it as the spiritual disciplines or disciplines of a godly man, disciplines of a godly woman. People would say, people could say this is the, the part of sanctification where we, play a pro, where we play a part in it. I think chapter six refers to, refers to um, God's part and our part. Okay, great. So maybe this is something new that we can learn. I do think as we work through here, and then when you see the examples of the spiritual disciplines, I think you're going to say, oh, okay, yeah, we do that. You know, it just maybe there's a different name. Perhaps I, I want to, to work through the passage before we actually get to the specific examples. Okay, so beginning here, what I see is this, uh, there's a conditional statement. B beginning and looking at this passage, we have this, this word if, okay? And so whenever we see, whenever we see the conjunction if, I think it's the Tagalog kung, it's kung, kung. I think in your, some of your translations, it would be, would be Tagalog kung. This is, what this is referring to is this is like a condition, okay? This is a conditional, a conditional clause, okay? So this clause is a conditional clause, and it's a conditional that's related to the main clause, Okay, so we have to ask ourselves, what is the conditional, what is the condition that must be met in order for the main clause to make sense? Okay, so before we look at this conditional clause, let's look at the main clause. The main clause is you have a, a, an actor here. And without going into asking too many questions, Paul is speaking, the, the letter of Timothy is addressed to Timothy. So, so Paul is speaking to Timothy. So he's telling Timothy, uh, the you is referring to Timothy, okay? And then we have this, uh, this link, this link here. This is a linking to something in the predicate, the second part of the sentence. And then what's... The, the second part is this description, okay? This description. And then we have the possessor. So the description is you will be a good servant. You will be a good servant of who? Of Christ Jesus. So Timothy is being described as, as a servant, correct? Now, uh, when we see this word, when we see this word servant, what is implied in this word servant from our previous studies? What is, what is the second part of the equation? If you have a servant, you have a master. Master, great. So the implication here is that there's a master. And when, when I look over to here, I really, as Christians, Christ, right, as Christians, as Christ followers, we, we have to get into a place of thinking of this name as uh, Messiah, Anointed One, or uh, King. We just, we have to get in that mindset. We're so focused on uh, a Gentile Christian view of just salvation that we really forget this name is such a, 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 a significant, to the Jew, this was the promised offspring of David, the king, the king who had set up his, the eternal kingdom of, of David. So uh, whenever we see Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ the Lord, we need to be thinking about lordship. We need to be thinking about uh, king, okay? And, and the reason for bringing that up is that we're, we're, we, we are servants. In ministry, we are, we, we are, we are forever in, in the service of a king. And many times we can lose sight of that and we can actually view ourselves as the king, right? <laughs> we become the king. And Paul is, Paul is giving a description that all of us want. 
the description that all of us want is the, the description that all of us want is to be known as a good servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us want this description among a couple of kids, okay? But it's not just guaranteed. There's this condition. And so coming back to the condition here, again, this you is a referencing to Timothy. Uh, and then you have this, this, this action. Put these things before the brothers. Put these things before the brothers. So this is the action. This is the action, and then there's this object. Now, what are these things, Diva? What what are these things? The the text doesn't say, and there's there's debate here on what these things are referencing, and uh, my understanding interpretation because there is. There is nothing specific referenced. Really, what this must be uh, would be this would be the, the, the content of the letter. Now there's debate on that, but I would say especially, especially what precedes. Okay. And some of the things that precede, well, let's just ask, I'll ask you, what are some things that precede? If, if you're familiar with First uh, Timothy 4, chapter 6 to 10, what, what are some of the content that's, that's described in First in Timothy 1 to 3? And then maybe even after, what are some, what are some things? Let, let's take a minute. If you want to look in your Bible, that's fine. I do want to spend a little bit of time here uh, just to orient. What are some things that are that are mentioned that we would we could we could understand as being these things? In verse one, to stand in faith, as you do not abandon faith and follow deceiving spirits. So to to stand on faith, verse one. Verse one of chapter four. Oh, verse, oh, yeah. Verse 1 of chapter 4. The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow the sinning spirit. Okay, yeah, good. So really, there's an emphasis upon the, we could say, the, the, the faith. The stand on the faith. So this would be, this would be like a core, core uh, beliefs, right? Core beliefs, Diva. The faith. It's more than just believing. It's the faith is actually the core doctrine, Stiva. So core beliefs or doctrine. Great. That's a great, that's a great uh, that's a great, and that's one of the things that he needs to be putting before the, the brothers. Excellent. So the emphasis upon doctrine. I, I like that. That's good. What else do we have? And, and verse two. The teaching. Uh, do not believe, okay, some of the teachings comes from hypocrit uh, hypocrit hypocritical liars whose conscience yeah. are not in service. So, this teaching, uh, do not believe in teaching coming from, okay, to stand, oh, what, is that? what has been taught, what has been taught in the Bible or what has been taught in the scripture or so, so let's Yes, no, I, I, let, let's try to, so I think what you're trying to say is the, the, the forbidding of marriage, requiring abstinence, it's almost like coming from the law, Diba, and especially in chapter one of Timothy, he warns about people that are abusing the law. So I, I think maybe that's where you're trying to go. So uh, there's also a command for um, right interpretation of the law, right interpretation of the law. Excellent. Okay, so we have the doctrine, the faith. So so core doctrine could be could be uh, this could be 
this is uh, God, who God is. This is concerning salvation. Uh, you also have right interpretation of the law. So people are abusing, they're, 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 they're abusing the law to, to like in a legalistic context. What about in, 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 in chapter in chapter in chapter two? There's an emphasis upon prayer, Diba. So really encouraging this this uh, this idea of prayer. Uh, we also have uh, this will be the last one is also in chapter three. We have the emphasis upon uh, conduct of leaders. Or we could say, uh, even in the church, and this could also be qualifications. So this is this is uh, chapter First Timothy three. Prayer is First Timothy two. Interpretation of the law is one and four and then this is in chapter four Diba. these are some of the things that that paul is really emphasizing Look, now, now watch this if you put these things before the brothers you will be a good servant of christ Diva, conduct of church leaders, holding church leaders to a high standard. That's Mahira, Diva. Prayer is, can be easy, it can be Mahira. Right interpretation of the law, focusing on core doctrine, right? These are not easy things, right? Notice here, Von Kapitid, it doesn't say if you're a good, if you're a, an amazing speaker, if you're an amazing guitar player, voila, Diva. Uh, not that those should not be we should not strive to preach well not that we should not strive to be a good guitar player but these things are more fundamental these things are very fundamental if we're going to be a good servant of christ okay and we're going to see this we're going to see this later okay um any questions or comments before we go on or is that making sense so let's let's go on here okay so if you notice here we've highlighted we've identified these things, although Hindi, Hindi pasigarada, diba, we're not a hundred percent sure because he doesn't specify these things. But look down here at this next statement, Mangkapit. Look, look, look at this. We then have this. This this is an action type uh, being trained, <laughs> being trained. The idea here of discipline. Okay. And then, and then, uh, this is modifying will be, will be. We could say that this is a, this is a, this could also be like a means. So if you look here, the, the, the condition is to put these things before the brothers and then specifically, you'll be a good servant of Christ Jesus. So, Diba, if you're putting these things before the brothers, Diba, you're also exemplifying them yourself. You're practicing them, Diba. This, this has the idea here of, of practice, Diba. Practice. Because you're also putting it before the brothers, you're practicing it, okay? And then here, uh, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus. How? Being trained. Being trained. Okay? And then look at the two things that we're trained in. Okay? This is... Kuya Henry looked into the earlier parts of the passage, right? He was looking before. This is after. Look at the two things. The words of the faith and of the good doctrine. 
Do you see that? This is, this is where he, he's supposed to be spending his time. This is the idea of discipline, okay? So you have here, you have here doctrine. Doctrine is, the, doctrine is the foundation. Faith is the theology. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, so we, could, we could say here, uh, uh, this is also good teaching. So that word doctrine is also teaching. And then the, the faith. Yeah, the faith would be our belief system. Yeah. And, and really, theology, uh, th there's, there's, there's a component in each, although maybe closer to here, okay? So, I mean, they're all connected. It's all connected, but it's emphasizing uh, uh, core beliefs and then also teaching okay uh, but this is the uh, this is the idea of what he's being trained in okay this is what he's practicing all right and then and then he actually he actually says this the description is which you have followed okay and does anyone have a different translation here I, I'm looking for another word for for have followed does anyone have another word for have follow in verse number six? I'm looking for an additional word. Okay, so maybe it's not there, but, but in some translations, in some, they have this word followed closely. It's added. So, so it's not just that he's following. This is the description here. It's regrettable that they don't have closely. But it's not just that he's following the words of faith. He's been trained in the words of faith. He's been trained in theology. He's been trained in good doctrine and good teaching. Right teaching. This could also be right teaching. It's that he is following it closely. He's following it closely. Now, now, moving along here, there's a command here. This is a prohibition. We're not going to spend a lot of time here. I, I guess we can spend time here, but you have a prohibition here, okay? There's a prohibition here, and the prohibition is to have... This is the, this is the prohibition. have nothing to do with what? Silly and irreverentness. Here's a question for you. What, 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 are some, uh, what are some things that, that we discuss or debate in a church that kind of draw us away from good teaching, that draw us away from good theology? What are some things in our church? In their day, it was they were going on and on with angels in like the in like the apocrypha, they were going on with with tangential stuff in 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 extra biblical writings. They were looking into these genealogies and and just it was just it was just such tangential uh, to to what they were doing. A uh, tangential to this. When when I say tangential, does everyone understand? It's, maybe that's a big word. Uh, when I say it, tangential is, is, is the idea from like a tangent, okay? So a tangent is a line that just barely touches a circle, okay? And so in the circle, we want to be focused on the bullseye, okay? A tangent is at the very, the very end here, okay? It's almost outside. It's not false. Maybe there's some truth there, but it's not... It's not here, okay? So this irreverent and silliness, perhaps they were true, perhaps they weren't, but it was tangential. It was, it was not something they should be centered upon. What are, some, what are some doctrines, what are some teachings in our church that we don't, that are not central, that draw us away from those core 
words of faith of good doctrine. What are some of these things? Let, let's talk here for a minute. I want to hear your perspective. What are some things in your church? Uh, uh, like it comes to a debate, uh, let's say, uh, whose doctrine or whose belief or whose something. Are you a Calvinist or are you a the other one? Is that uh, Armenian? Are you Armen Armenian or you you believe in post millennial or are we now living in this uh, enta uh, something like that? Which are just divisive issue. Yeah. So so what you're saying I think is true is that is that of course we should have a perspective debate about we should have a perspective we should have a position. But if all we're doing is just arguing and arguing down this path and, and, and it's becoming divisive or it's becoming, uh, it's just an endless debate, an endless debate. Now that's good, that's good. What are some other things? In my background, for, for us, like a core debated issue was uh, King James, was King James. You had to only use the King James. Now, now, again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have those discussions, but if that if that became your your foundation, if that became your 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 complete focus, all right, then it does seem to be moving away from the central truths of the the deity of Christ, the Trinity, the gospel. You see, so it's like. Uh, Another is, is uh, dresses, your, your modesty, you know, how many slips can you have? It has to be below the knee, you know, like dress. So there are these other uh, Christian, Christian convictions that we should have. I'm not saying we shouldn't have it. We should have, it, uh, we should have a position on which text we use and why. We, sh we should have a position on having a dress code. But if that becomes central... If that becomes central, uh, it's 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 inappropriate. Now I'm only using that as an analogy. So Paul says here, have nothing to do with irreverent and silly myths. So in one sense, the two is not one to one analogous because the things we just described they have a place for it. Here Paul says there's no place. So there are there are some things in our church that are even to a point where we should not even be wasting our time. And, and perhaps, I, I like what Pastor, what Pastor Henry was saying, perhaps some of the end times debates, we should have nothing to do with them because it's complete conjecture. It's complete speculation. They're, they just have no place. We shouldn't be wasting our time. Um, or or in, in certain areas of Calvinism or Arminianism where you're, you're, you're dealing in pure hypothetical. You're dealing in pure hypothetical. And it's just so beyond the pale. It's like, we should have nothing to do with that. Um, good. So, so Paul says, don't take up your time with these things. Don't waste your time with these things. Rather, rather, what does he say? Rather. Rather, what is the command? Command. Train. Train yourself for godliness, purpose. Train yourself for godliness. So this is, this is the command, Munger Kapatid. So don't waste your time with those things that you cannot find an answer to, that, have, that are irreverent, they're silly, okay? So th there is there are places in theology that can become silly, okay? Where it's pure speculation or it's, it's beyond the realm of knowability, okay? It's pure, and someone says it's pure philosophy, okay? And so we, we do have to find that line. There is a line to, there is a place to study theology. There is a place, like it said, good doctrine, about good doctrine, the, uh, um, the words of the faith. So there is that place, and then there is a place where it just moves beyond, okay? Um, but here's the, now the, the positive command. Spend your time, invest your time 
in this. Train, your, train yourself for godliness. So this is a contrast here. This is a contrast. And we see the purpose, Manakapatid. We're to be... Uh, uh, notice here, it's a command. So, of course, we'll, we'll talk in the rejoinder, we'll talk about this. But Diba, we cannot do this without the Spirit. So there is a, there is a source coming from God. But at the same time, there is a command for ourselves to be practicing godliness, okay? So this, this idea here, the imagery here, Manakapatid, the imagery is that of, athletic training okay but the purpose is that of godliness okay so we are commanded to be training ourselves for godliness okay so Diba last week we emphasized the spirit in in salvation we emphasize the work of God that we cannot save ourselves but in this area in the practice of godliness the spirit does work in our hearts to transform us but we have a part to play. We have to practice this discipline, okay? So it's not all the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is working behind us, but, we, but we, now we have to exercise what has been given to us, okay? Now look at this monocompetent. Here we go. This is going to be good, okay? So I want, your, I want you to be thinking about this. I want you to be thinking about this, this imagery here. I'm going to ask you a question shortly about this. We have an explanation, Manakavatid. Here now is an explanation. The explanation is, while bodily exercise, bodily, I think some translations have exercise. While bodily exercise is of some value, does anyone have King James? Henry, do you have King James? Someone has King James. What does the King James say? Does anyone have King James? For while bodily exercise profits little. Okay. So uh, there, is, there is a value. There is a value in bodily training. Diba? Who exercises regularly, physically? <laughs> Henry, who else exercises? Who plays basketball? Sino. Is, is, there, is there a benefit to your basketball game to be training your bodily your body physically, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, right? What does it help you do? <laughs> Dunk, right? Dunk. <laughs> Box out, right? The 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 big the big if you play basketball, I I, I play basketball, I try sometimes. Right now I can't play this COVID, but a city. Uh, Assist, yeah. Um, when I played before in high school, I was very skinny. I was a very skinny person. And I, I played down low. I was a power forward. I was a power forward, but I was so skinny. So I was always being pushed around. I'm always being pushed around. Pushed out. Pushed out of the paint. But when I started to exercise and work out, wow, I could just stay inside the paint. I'm pushing people with my butt. Because, because when I gain muscle strength, I was able to body with the big guys. I was able to get the rebounds. I was able to box out. I was able to, to push people out when they're trying to, to post up. So, so uh, there is benefit. There is a benefit. There is some value. There is some value in bodily exercise. Okay? There is some value. Although the King James says little, which it's a limited value, Diva. There is a limited value in bodily exercise. But <laughs> look at this. Godliness is a value. Godliness is a value in every way. Now we're gonna look at, at we're gonna look at the result. I want to first really emphasize here. So what we have here is, what we have here is this 
This is a comparison, Biba. This is a comparison. So we really need to unpack. The command is to train, is to, is to train ourselves spiritually. And the comparison is bodily training, Biba. So let's really unpack. If we're going to be successful in spiritual discipline, we really have to use and understand the imagery of this, of this athletic training, Biba. So I want to ask question now. So my question now for us is, uh, um, what are good practices for disciplining our bodies for athletics. So you could be a basketball player, you could be a track and field star, you could be a, a football player, uh, you could be a soccer player, football or football, you could be a tennis player, you can be a Manny Pacquiao, a boxer. What are the different what are all the different kinds of extra, uh, what are all the different kinds of uh, physical disciplines in order for, to prepare us to prepare someone, let's say for boxing? What are all the different types of physical preparations that we have to discipline our bodies? I, I want to list not specific exercises, but like big pictures. Go ahead, give me some. Go ahead, I want to hear. Okay. And the body condition is to uh, eat the right food. Eat right food. No, that's good. That's uh, that's very good. Discipline of eating. What else? Rest. 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 Sleeping. Yes. Yes. Rest. What else? Now, I, let, me, let me make a clarification. I don't want exercise as in like bench press, but I want the big kinds of exercise. There's different kinds of, of, of discipline in order to prepare. Let's say Manny Pacquiao prepares. What are different kinds of discipline? So we have eating, we have rest. What else do we have? It's uh, <clears throat> the bed of the endurance or the stamina. Yeah, so you have endurance, you have endurance training. You bought endurance training? What else? What else? Strength training. The boss strength. You have to build the strength. Then. Diba. What else? Boxing. Come on. Come on. Fight skill. You have you have coordination training. Diba. You 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 have the the different bags. To, to, to train your coordination, Biba. Uh, UFC, right? They're, they're catching the ping pong, right? They're throwing the, the ping pong ball, the tennis ball. Biba, it's, it's, it's practicing the, high, the, the hand eye coordination. Uh, you have skill training, Biba. You have skill training. You also have, you also have, um, I, how do I say that? You have a, uh, Last one, like a scrimmage. Do you, know you call it scrimmage? That's what we call it in basketball, scrimmage. Do you know it's like real life practice, Diba. You know? In boxing, they 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 box with with opponents in preparation, Diba. You know? Sparring. Sparring, yes. There it is. Sparring. I cannot think of the word. So I've just given seven different. What else is there? There's some, there's, now there's some mental. There's some mental as well. Um, what other types of, of discipline do they, do they, do they have? Diba, isn't there mental discipline? Yeah, mental. And they have to study their opponent's movement. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Good. No, there's, there's, the, there's the, the study of the opponent. 
What else? Diba, there's, there's the strategy. Diba, Conor McGregor, I, maybe you don't watch UFC. Diba, he goes as hard as he can at the beginning and he gasses himself at the end. He's so tired. He cannot finish five rounds because his goal is, his strategy is to knock out in the first or second round. Others will, will, will wait till the end, Diba. Uh, Diba, when, when, when Conor McGregor fought, um, Money Mayweather, right? Gassed. He was gassed. He was so tired. And the ninth round, <laughs> just done, right? So th there's also strategy. Diba, there, there's, uh, even in basketball, Diba, you have set plays. There's a strategy. There's, there's strategy uh, uh, theory as well. Diba, so right here, I've given 10, 10 different disciplines and there's more the there's there's even recovery there's recovery right they go in the sauna they do the oxygen they, they they're in the oxygen tank to control their breathing they're using the oxygen mask to reduce the oxygen airflow but what i'm trying to say is that there's a, there's many different disciplines for training our bodies for um athletics and what i want us to think about here What I want us to think about here is to apply this to here, okay? So I have a list for us of spiritual disciplines that we can be practicing. But what I want us to see here is that Viva, the best athletes are those that really are committed. They're committed to, to all of these different things. If you're not working out every day, you're never going to get that endurance. If you're not training the skill, you're going to come there. You're, 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 you're going to, to miss the shot when you have fatigue. Okay? Now, um, uh, what is the benefit? Godliness is profitable in every way. And then he gives us this reason, Manga Kapatid. Now, can someone read what they have in their Bibles? Can someone read 8 verse, verse B or 8 verse C? Can someone read that? Holding promise for both the present life and life to come. Yeah. That's very That's good. Um, so there's a promise. There's this promise. Now, when I was studying this, I had, a, I had already worked out my notes. And then I did some further research and study. And I was like, oh, I missed it. I totally missed it. Because I was thinking about what is the promise? What is the promise? He doesn't mention the promise. And the promise is before our, is, the promise is before our eyes. The promise is this. The promise is, uh, the promise is life. Uh, this is a, this is in, in, in the structure, it's the promise which is life. So this could be worded, which is life. This is a clarification. Let me just read, let me just read several passages for you. Uh, uh, James chapter one, James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has withstood the test, he will receive the crown, which is life. <laughs> the crown of life, the reward of life, which is promised to those who are loving him. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse, verse 16. So this is only six verses later, seven verses later. Keep close watch on yourself and on the teaching. So it's yourself and also the teaching. The same context, Diba. Uh, persist in this, for by doing so, you will, see, you will save both your hearers and yourself. Okay? The idea being that, that if we practice these things, the promise is life now and to come. 
now and to come. Does everyone see that? So when we practice the spiritual disciplines, when we're, when we're practicing, uh, when we're training ourselves for godliness, the promise is life, both now and to come. Okay? And, and, and throughout the New Testament, this life is eternal life. Okay, so we're, we're receive, we'll, we're, we will receive this reward, okay? This is not works-based. We'll see why it's not works-based in a moment. But I do want to emphasize this, that, that when we discipline ourselves in spiritual godliness, the promise of spiritual discipline is life, both now and in the future. Let's ask, how, can, how would you say that, the, that, this, is, that this is a promise in relationship to the godliness how can godly how can godliness give us life now and to come think about that how can it be a promise now as life now and, and to come the in godliness it's not our work alone it is the work of the holy spirit in us who 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 works in us to be godly so it is not really us who is working it is the holy spirit we are allowing the holy spirit to work in us so therefore it's it will resolve life now and the future yeah no and, and you're correct so what i what i what, what I, I guess what i'm trying to get henry is so let's get very practical let's get very very pra practical how can there be life for us now if we practice godliness if we practice spiritual discipline how can our life be prolonged? How, um, uh, let's talk about this idea of life. Okay. In this morning, our subject is uh, rhythm, rhythm of life and Sabbath. Okay, Sabbath, Sabbath. Uh, Sabbath was placed, Sabbath is a command. It's a command by God that we have to rest. We have to rest. Okay. In, to rest is, yes, it's allowing our body to rest, but the important part is we are to connect with God during that Sabbath rest. Yeah. So while being connected with God during Sabbath rest, we are re- energizing our body to him so it's you know that's uh, sabbath rest yeah. then also a command yeah, uh, to to pray or to con a uh, uh, regular regular con uh, regular devotion it's a deep deeper deep, deeper devotion in it was the life of Daniel, he prayed three times a day. The life of Saul, what's that? Okay, so Daniel, even Daniel, he prayed three times a day. So why does he need to pray? Why do he need to pray three times a day? It's because life is pressurized. His life was pressurized, so he need to be with God. Jesus was pressurized, so he has to he has to wake up early to be with God. Yeah. So no. So that's good. So so this. So you have this idea of, um, uh, so you're absolutely right. In, in J John 17, Diva, this is eternal life to know God. <laughs> Diva, um, and. So, so there is a real, there is a real truth that when we are exercising the spiritual disciplines, and we're going to see, you're giving away some of my thunder, but, but in prayer and scripture reading, we are in the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is, as you said, indwelling with us. And so, as we are in the presence of God, we are experiencing life. And and there is, there is, uh, of course, there is a physical life now that could perhaps be prolonged. But we're also thinking about we're now partaking in this eternal life both now and in the future as well. And I think that's what you're trying to say. The other thing with the rest is that there is the health benefit. If we're not taking Sabbath rest, 
people become sick, you can have a heart attack. Not practicing self-discipline, spiritual discipline, can lead to adverse effects in our life, whether it's physical life or, um, uh, yeah, with, 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 with physical life. Um, I'm also thinking about here, Mangakapatibhiba, if we don't practice discipline, we allow the works of the flesh and lust to have their way. Uh, the works of the flesh lead to death. Diba? They lead to death. Death and damnation. Yes. Let's go. Let's go to a passage of scripture very quickly. Let's go to a passage of scripture to, to, to show this. I'm going to go to two passages here. Our favorite passage, Romans 8. Romans 8. 8 2. Yeah, we could go to Romans 8 2 as well. Let's, let's, okay, let's go there first. Let's go there first. Um, the law of the spirit of life has set us free in Christ from the law of sin and death. Okay. So that, that's setting the context. When you come down here to verse number, verse number 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you by the spirit put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So that's the spiritual discipline. Putting to death the deeds of the body that that and we talked about this before that death it could refer to physical death but it's referring to eschatological death final death the, the second death um and 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 of course the presupposition is the spirit is not working so of course we have to here we have to put to death the deeds of the body because the spirit is, is leading us it's indwelling us it's the same context in in first timothy the, the, the emphasis, the accent is upon our command, is upon the command to train, but what presupposes the work of the Spirit, okay? Um, uh, but we have to do the work nonetheless. The Spirit's empowering us, but we have to do the work. Let's go to one other passage. If we go back to Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, let me begin in verse 15. So we have Romans uh, 8, 1, just to Romans 8, 1 to 17. Uh, now we're looking at Romans 6, verses 15 to 23. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one to whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, so by not practicing spiritual disciplines, we are in fact revealing ourselves to be unbelievers and we're still slaves to sin and that's leading us to death. Okay, so we're, we're, either, we're either truly in the spirit and, we're, and we're, we're pursuing godliness. That's why it's so important to be pursuing godliness. We're showing ourselves to be who we are in Christ. Um, if you are slaves of the one who you obey, either sin that leads to death or obedience which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, watch, and have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching, right doctrine, <laughs> the words of faith to which you are committed. You have been set free from the sin of death and you have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. Just as you were once members and slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, now you are presented as members of slaves, leading to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free to righteousness. But what fruit you were getting at that time, fruit... Uh, the things you are now ashamed for the end of those end of life that does not pursue godliness, that does not train the body for godliness. The end of those things is death. But now you have been set free from sin. You have become slaves to God. The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. Ah, works-based salvation. Yvonne, that sounds like works based salvation. No. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift, the free gift is eternal life 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the wages of sin is death. And you would expect the wages of sanctification is life. That's what you're expecting. The wages of, 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 of godliness is life, but it's no, it's the free gift. The free gift. And so what's presupposed, <coughs> what's, being, what's being emphasized here is presupposed here. Is that is that uh, the, the spirit is the spirit is implied. The spirit is implied. As as Henry mentioned. But here, life, the if we discipline our body, godliness is a value in everywhere, having promise of life now and to come. The free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. So again, complete consistency. But here, the accent is upon spiritual discipline, training ourselves for godliness. And then the, the last statement here is the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end, we toil and we strive. Because we have our hope set on the living God, the Savior of all people, even or namely, he is the Savior who is the Savior of all people. Okay, so uh, I, I, I don't want to really spend a lot of time here. I, I do want to say that Paul emphasizes here this declaration here of this declaration here of. To this end, we toil and strive. To this end, we toil and strive. And so there is a striving. There is a striving that we are called to do, okay? In, in, in training our bodies, in disciplining our bodies, there is a toil and a striving, okay? I do want to read one passage before we move to the, to, to the last part of our study. I, let's, let's go to Colossians. Colossians 1 28, because I think this really describes perfectly what Paul is saying here. Look at verse 20 and 29, almost the exact same statement. Uh, Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, for this I toil, Diva. Struggling with all my energy and all my power. Does it say that? Struggling with all his energy. He powerfully works within me. So I toil with his energy. I work hard because he's working within me. So what I want us to see here, Manga Kapitid, is that as we practice the spiritual disciplines, I want you to toil. I want you to labor with all of his energy that he works within us. And this is the balance. Like, um, training ourselves to be godly yeah. helps us to sustain in the tragedy that happens in our life. Tama, tama. So let's, let's quickly bring this to a close. It's already becoming late. Let's go back now to, you, you, you have the biblical foundation. I, I, I really want to lay the foundation that what I want to emphasize to us, Manga Kapitid, is that, the, is that this striving is not optional. Okay? Spiritual disciplines are not optional, but at the same time, they are not to be, they are not to be a grounds for boasting. They are not to be a grounds of, of, ourselves but we must practice them so i just want to give you some these, these are just several statements concerning first timothy theological truths number one we are commanded to discipline ourselves spiritually that is a command one option that's what the text says so 
we need to be disciplining ourselves. Number two, the purpose is for godliness. So this is spiritual training. Okay, this is not physical training. This is spiritual training. Number three, the primary, the primary illustration is athletic training. So as we engage in the spiritual disciplines, be thinking about athletic training. Number four, the promise is life. And this life is now and to come, and it's primarily eternal. It's this incorruptible life that we have. Okay, number five, we are to be fully committed to this discipline. With all to this end, we toil and strive. And number six, we do this not for ourselves, not for our fame, not for our name, but with complete focus upon God, the Savior of all mankind. Now, let's go on to just again, uh, here are the spiritual disciplines. Okay, so I... I've laid them out for you. I wanted to give them one at a time, but I guess there's a problem here. So I'll just briefly go through these. There's 12, okay? The first thing I want to say is that even for me, it's impossible for me to do every one of these all the time. We're busy. Um, so I don't want us to be thinking about when I'm training physically, when I'm exercising we can't do all the different things like Manny Pacquiao, okay? So I'm not expecting you to do all these. What I hope these can be is, this is a range of different kinds, and I hope that we can use, we can, we can use these. The other thing I want to say, Manga Kapitid, is that some are more foundational than others. Scripture reading and prayer and, and self-discipline of the mind, those are very, those are very foundational. We need to be practicing those every day. And then these others we do as we can, okay? And we do need to be practicing them regularly, although we might not be able to, to do them every day. So we have scripture reading, we have prayer, discipline of the mind, meditation, giving, scripture study, scripture memory, study of doctrine, fasting, singing, fellowship, and then stewardship. So these are 12. Um, I hope that although you can't practice these every day, that you will consider how you can implement the, these in your, in your uh, disciplining of our body, training ourselves in all godliness. If you notice, the text really accented the, the faith and also good teaching. So there is a need for us to study. That's why I have doctrine here. Some people would say, no, we should not have that. That's too, no, that's in the text. First Timothy 4, 6, we both, it's, in, it's just inferred. And then it's also emphasized in verse, in verse 6 and 7. It's there. So studying of doctrine, scripture memory, um, scripture study. So, so these are really good. Are there any others? Now that you see these, I'm sure that most of you are practicing these. Are there any others that I left out that you would want me to include? I, I can include another one if I miss something. Is there something else that you think we should include here? There is. Go ahead. Study in EVST. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Henry, I'm going to add that. I need to add that. I'm going to add that. I'll, I'm going to post this on the group, the group page, and I'll add that. Study in EVST, yeah. <laughs> Cigarado, you will have life. <laughs> good. Uh, no, that's good. Um, I, I, Mother Capitan, I want, I want you to compare this to if you were training for basketball, if you're training for badminton, if you're, you bought, you're, like for me, I like to, I do like to do personal fitness. Okay, I'm not doing all of the things that, every day. I cannot. I cannot do cardio and strength training. I cannot do. I cannot do, you know, what I'll do is I'll have one or two that I, I try to do every day and then I add as I can. So please don't think about, oh, how can I do all of these? What I want, to, I want you to do is to be thinking about that you should be practicing these regularly, but not every day. And sometimes maybe you get tired of meditating on scripture. There are times where I just play my guitar and sing to God. I, my, I have a headache from studying. So in my devotions, I will not study the scripture. I'm already tired. 
I will just worship God through singing. That's fine. So there's different, you know, just think about how to mix it up. Uh, just like a, 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 an athlete will do different exercises at different times to really build that to preparation. I just want us to be thinking about how, what can we do to, um, to really uh, practice spiritual discipline to, to become godly. I'll give one example of a specific thing I did. This might actually be abstinence. I don't know. But I removed the Facebook app from my, from my phone because I was spending a lot of time. So I, I decided for a period of time so there would be no temptation. I can focus. I removed the Facebook app. So, so think about ways of, of maybe there's a temptation, there's something in your life, maybe you need to remove it. Maybe, for example, if you're, if you're rest, wrestling with covetousness and you're always in the mall, maybe you should not go to the mall for a period of time. Maybe you can practice abstinence like that. So there's different ways that each one of us have a different struggle. And we need to be really uh, careful and, and think about ways to remove things, uh, so I really want us just to be thinking about that. How can we grow in godliness? How can we exercise uh, spiritual discipline, spiritual exercise to make us uh, godly? And of course, all of this is presupposed, presupposing the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, so that's all, that's all I have for tonight. We're finished. What I'll do is I'll post this on the group page, work on chapter... Did you finish? You have you finished this for today or not yet? Did you already do chap? Did you finish this already? You about you finished this? Good. Okay, so chapter seven. So we're on to the next chapter, and um, I hope this can be a complement with with uh, chapter six. I I think th does chapter six. I missed it. Do they go through the list of the dif different disciplines or not so much? Do they go through all the different things or not really? Not so much. Okay, not so what I'll do is. I'll give a basic definition of each one of these as well. Because Diba for prayer, prayer, for example, prayer is more than just asking for requests. Prayer includes adoration, thanksgiving, uh, confession, prayer for daily needs, prayer for others, pray for, prayer for the, the Lord's will to be done, God's kingdom to come. So what I'll do is maybe I'll post a single page handout. And, and these are the spiritual disciplines, though. I think, I think chapter six really just emphasized us being involved in the discipline part. The focus was upon, was upon like the legalistic versus the overgrace, the hypergrace legalistic. So um, yeah, I, I want to emphasize that, that this is not, you're not earning your salvation. At the same time, we are called to grow in godliness and holiness. Okay. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this evening. Uh, you have taught us the uh, in spiritual discipline. You have prom you promised life now and to come, Father. It has been consistent with your word as, uh, that the Holy Spirit, which you put in us, He will be working. Uh, he will be working through us, Father. Uh, we just we pray that you will give us more encouragement to do spiritual discipline, Father. Uh, do not allow our business to overcome, to, to, be, to be put us in overwhelming situation that we forget to rest upon you. Father, we thank you that you have given us uh, uh, this life uh, which was created in your image and your likeness that we have to do resting. This resting is, should be together with you so that we can be energized. Thank you that we delight in your presence as we rest also. Thank you for this evening. May you bless us with a good rest tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.